The man, Henry Tillman, the mission. Come up with the big idea. He became a media superstar. It was career changing for me. It's a campaign that people still talk about to this day. It was revolutionary, it was breakthrough. I'm Henry Tillman, a little guy who can make a big splash. I had the idea of trying to figure out a way to use the towers as that symbol. They were always a symbol of how we could do anything. The campaign was produced 30 years ago. It was a great time to be in New York. A big enough way to tell New York Channel 11 is bigger and better than ever. It was really a stroke of genius and a wonderful marketing tool for the station. WPIX was seen by many as the, the ultimate like New York station. The message is clear. We had to conceive commercials, find shooting locations around them. So the towers did have a special place in my mind. The Henry Tillman campaign, it's one of the few things you can look back and look at the World Trade Centers and still chuckle and smile. The Twin Towers and WPIX will always be connected. And now, Telepix is on the air. In 1947, the New York Daily News felt that time had come to get into the TV business were designated Channel 11. But one of the things that they need, of course, is a name. Mr. Uh, hoo -hoo, this is great, I almost forgot his name. They hold a contest among Daily News employees, you know, come up with uh, our call letters. Vincent Krug, who was a delivery uh, cashier, uh, came up with the call letters WPIX. Of course, what is television gonna be about but pictures, PIX, pics. Um, so it was sort of the perfect name. Here is the news at 8.55. Brought to you by Nob Hill and Airway. One of the first faces that people saw was a fellow by the name of John Tillman, who was a news director and an anchor. Mm -hmm. no. He was a station whose programming decisions, whose news, really felt like it was by New Yorkers and for New Yorkers. This is Channel 11, New York's movie station. It was an all-purpose entertainment station. Uh, we had terrific movies. I mean, we in the 80s, we had a slogan, New York's movie station. It's nice to say hello, Ola. hello, and how are you? We ran lots of great children's programming live here at the station in the 50s and 60s. Uh, folks of a certain you know, age will remember Joe Bolton, Captain Jack, Alan Swift hosting Popeye. Another thing that we staked a claim on very, very early was sports. Uh, we carried New York Giants games, the baseball Giants, before football, and then we picked up the Yankees. This is it! There it goes! It's out of here! Picks became a very profitable and, and powerful station. In the 1980s, it was among the top 10 uh, revenue generating stations in the country. Oh, man, it's such, it's such an emotional connection. I mean, 16 years of, of my life is something that you just can't forget. Good morning. This is WCBS. I had worked in New York at Channel 2 for a couple of years and then went to CBS Network. And that's the way it is. Friday, March 6th, 1981. I had the great experience of being there for the last year of Walter Cronkite. Stand by, ready three, take three, Mike Ewer. I got an opportunity to go to Atlanta to help launch CNN. I'm Lois Hart. Now here's the news. And then out of the blue, got a call from a fellow by the name of Jim Ellis at uh, Tribune Corporate saying, would you like to come work for PIX, which was a superstation itself at that time. <laughs> Flying into New York, I to this day can still remember looking out the window and seeing the Twin Towers and seeing Manhattan below me. And I had this visceral reaction that I'm coming home. Good evening, I'm Morton Dean. Don't miss INN. PIX was at a stage where they were ready not to think of themselves as, you know, a, a little station. Once again, terrorists on a suicide mission have attacked the U.S. Embassy in Beirut. There were so many good things like Yankee baseball, movie packages, sitcom packages, but there had not been the opportunity for anybody to just kind of bring it together and to, to brand it. It's hard to be down. Here was this enormous billboard, if you will, for Channel 11 that, that any station in town would have just loved to have. It's breathtaking. I remember sitting with Lev Pope, who was the general manager at that time, 
but I wanted to know if they had ever really made that connection themselves. The answer is, in a very limited way, they had. The PIX logo, to some degree, was built on the Twin Towers look. So I had the idea of trying to figure out a way to use the towers as that symbol, but to do it respectfully. The North Tower of the World Trade Center was topped out in December 1970. The South Tower was completed in 1971. You have to remember that at that time, they were only about 10 years old. The first suggestion of a World Trade Center really came in the mid-1940s. I deem this reply the unconditional surrender of Japan. It was a post-World War II project. Let's have a place where all the great uh, trade-related uh, companies can have offices and we'll bring the consulates downtown and so forth. And it just, there weren't enough companies to rent space, so it, it died. It came back in the late 50s and early 60s as part of a program to stop the the abandonment of Lower Manhattan. The architect they hired, Minoru Yamasaki, uh, from outside Detroit, uh, they hired him because he was good at plazas. In 1966, demolition began. In all, 164 buildings had to be torn down. It was extraordinarily controversial. Um, politics had something to do with it. There were, oh, 25. Uh, lawsuits ranging from shopkeepers to the Empire State Building. The exterior walls were designed to bear much of the weight of the towers as well as all of the wind loads. A major reason behind why they look like metal boxes instead of glass boxes is because the windows are so narrow. The windows are narrow because Yamasaki suffered from acrophobia. He was afraid of heights. And he said that if he stood in front of a window and if the window pane was narrower than his shoulders, then he felt fine. And I think that must be the only time that a fear of heights has dictated the look of an enormous skyscraper. But they were always a symbol of how Americans could basically do whatever we wanted to do. If we decided to do it and put our mind to it, we could do anything. One thing I know is that life is short. The city, it was so vibrant in the 80s. To the rhythm of the boogie to beat. It was a great time to be in New York. It gets through Buckner, and the Mets win it! It was a great time to be involved in broadcast promotion. ANN's Pat Harper. My day starts with news. And one way or another, yours probably does too. I came here in 1980, which was also the year that Independent Network News was formed. The great AWAC battle is over. Saudi Arabia. I was born within weeks of the birth of WPIX. So I sort of grew up with the station, but I personally never made the connection with the Twin Towers and the Channel 11 logo. The idea of using humor to do it surfaced as, as the right way to go at it. For Henry Tillman, the quest continues, searching for a dream, reaching for a star, looking for the big idea. Well, we were excited to get Paul. He was really a marketing genius, and he had came to us from Turner Broadcasting in Atlanta kind of with those credentials told, go and do what you want to do. You know, the station is in your hands. The man, Henry Tillman, the mission. Come up with the big idea. It's important, I think, to understand that this was the first time the station had done a, what we would call a generic campaign. Each spot had to not just entertain, but had to contain some selling points. Channel 11's got blockbuster movies. Everyone's favorite comedies. The key <laughs> to the whole news. thing was Angie Gordon and Grasso Productions. Without them, I wouldn't have known where to start. I began my career in 1970 in the art department of a television station. This is KXTV 10, Sacramento, Stockton. By the late 70s, I had my own production company. A New York film crew led by former Sacramento Mike Grasso is in town. I met Angie Gordon out of KPIX in San Francisco. Angie and I formed a creative team. As a team, we went around the country producing promotional campaigns for television stations. And that's how we met Paul Bissonnette. Michael Grasso was a terrific director, and it was just a, a perfect team. Once we got the go-ahead on the campaign, we obviously had to cast the main character, which was Henry Tillman. We went through the usual casting routine, but we had worked with a man named Chris Chisholm for another Channel 11 promo. 
he had remembered him and we brought him in for Henry Tillman. I would say there was very little acting involved for a guy like me. He sort of instantly got it as to what the character was all about. We all knew immediately that he was the guy. It's so interesting, the first audition, the uh, character was called Frank Gallagher, which also has two L's, like the 11 or the World Trade Centers. And Henry Tillman has two L's. And I was like, oh, I like this character, Frank Gallagher. He's kind of a tough guy. And then when I started playing it that way, Paul was like, no, I think we're going to call you Henry Tillman. And I was like, no, Paul, please. I love Frank Gallagher. He's a tough guy, like a private detective, you know? And he goes, no, nah, it's got to be more schlubby, more of an everyman. Maybe today. I went in for the callback, and they had a New York Yankee cap. And uh, they said, uh, can you put on the cap? And I said, I really can't. I'm from Boston. I'm a, I'm a Red Sox fan. And they said, you want the job? I said, uh, yeah. They said, well, then put on the cap. I put on the cap. I got the job. I had gone to the University of Miami, and I studied uh, theater for my undergraduate work. Through high school and college, I worked as a, as a cook and then as a chef. I started as a chowder boy in Maine, and then I worked at Salem Country Club in Massachusetts, and the chef there was the former chef at the White House uh, when Eisenhower was president. And his name was Bill Reynolds, and he said, when you go to New York, I know you're gonna be an actor, you're gonna do really well, but I don't want you to be a starring artist. I want you to go down, I'm gonna call a friend of mine because I want you to have a job when you get there. And he called a guy who was the chef at the Hotel Pierre, and his name was Andre Rene. Andre was a gold medal chef, and it turned out that Andre Rene was the original executive chef at Windows on the World when the World Trade Center opened. But that connection to the World Trade Center was uncanny. Frustrated in his quest for the big idea, Channel 11's Henry Tillman appeals to the people of New York. At that time, video uh, was not like the video we know today. We really wanted these to be more cinematic in scope. And at that time, I owned my own 35 millimeter camera, so why not put it to use? The process of shooting on 35 millimeter film at that time was incredibly labor intensive. Frequently hours of setup for three or four second clip. Henry, the big idea may be right in front of your eye. Yeah. The station has never funded things like this before. And because as you can probably imagine, that was a, a pretty expensive campaign to shoot. I would say that in total, the, the campaign certainly cost in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. He became, you know, a media superstar. These spots started running every day, multiple times a day, every day for two years, on the subway and in restaurants, walking down the street. People would say, hey, Henry, have you tried looking at the World Trade Center? You know, and it was all about People really rallied behind this guy. People instantly got the joke because within a fairly short period of time, people began sending letters. There were proposals of marriage. There, were, there was a Henry Tillman fan club. Folder within a folder. It's interesting just to see a working script and the way scripts evolve. It's fascinating to see this, I'm, and I'm so glad that you, that you found these. What I was telling you about Henry's fan club and, and his following, it became obvious that he had to have glossies to hand out when people stopped him on the street, which happened all the time. So this is what these were produced for. I always had a stack of these pictures. I wanted to publicize it as well. It was a great campaign. So everywhere I went, restaurants, a bar, a club, you know, to a shop or anywhere, and people would instantly recognize this iconic figure, Henry Tillman. I'd just pull out a picture and then put it on the wall. So Henry Tillman was on every wall. The mission? Find a way to tell New York that Channel 11 is bigger and better than ever. Those truly impacted ratings and, and PIX really at that point was very, very visible and the ratings were terrific. This was fairly early in Maureen Dowd's career at the New York Times and has gone on to become a highly recognized and lauded journalist. She picked up on the fact that Henry was, was becoming, as she puts it beautifully, a cult hero for the klutzy. I mean, what could be better than that? The World Trade Towers became the Henry Tillman Towers for those several years because people related the towers to the campaign. That's how powerful this campaign was. But I'll never find a big enough way to say it. 
What was fun about it is we got to build on the original idea. And as the spots progressed, I think they got funnier, a little more clever, a little more entertaining. Henry was an unusual little boy, a very good student, but a bit of a dreamer. An only child, Henry blessed the Tillman household here in Plainview, Long Island. This is his glove. I saved it. Henry always wanted to play for the Yankees. I always got a special kick out of the spot that begins with Henry's boss. I told Henry, find a way to tell New York Channel 11 has big entertainment every night. I thought he'd take out a newspaper ad or something. Not long after it ran, Burger King introduced um, a series of commercials featuring a very similar character, kind of a clueless everyman that had never tried Burger King before. Wide search for Herb, the one man who's never tasted a Burger King burger. Herb was never what you'd call normal. I guess we just wrote it off as imitation as the sincerest form of flattery. They were much criticized. The agency lost the account. And to most people's thinking, it was one of the least successful fast food commercials ever done. Even in sleep, Channel 11's Henry Tillman dreams of the big idea. It had to ultimately end, and it did, with Henry's dream. <laughs> the spot is Henry Tillman's asleep and finally dreams of the big idea. This elaborate dream has, you know, the dancing World Trade Centers and dancing girls in Yankee outfits and baseball caps and he's in a top hat and tails and it's just fabulous. The, the production value was real, it was a real Broadway show number. On your side. And at the end of the dream, Henry can't remember what he dreamt and he goes back to sleep. So once again, he misses the big idea. What's kind of bittersweet about that memory is when we were on stage shooting that spot, the space shuttle exploded. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. The sound guy just cried out, oh my God. And it was between takes and we were all together kind of in this family environment. We knew it was the last shot of a long series of spots we were doing. It was sensitive, touching, deeply moving. At the same time, it was a day of great victory and celebration. New York's got a number. The icing on the cake, I guess you could say, was um, the recognition in the New York Emmys for the Henry Tillman campaign, which we were privileged to receive. So this is from the 1984-1985 New York Emmy Awards. The World Trade Center is gone, ladies and gentlemen. Both buildings collapsing from apparent terrorist attacks. Fifteen years had gone by since we finished the last of the Henry Tillman spots. And to see the towers damaged that morning, uh, my brain could not process it. Like everybody, I get a heartache when I, when I see any visual depiction of the towers as they were. Of course, it was very special to me and a very sad day when they went down because they had a special place in my heart. It's really interesting. In one of the commercials, we interview his parents. But at one point, his mother says, things haven't always gone right for Henry. And I cut to a home movie that we shot. Henry's about eight years old, and he's built a set of block trade towers. And they're standing behind him. And at some point, the towers collapse around him. It was so strange to go back and, and see it again. I'm glad we did it when we did it. I'm glad that. It, it came and went far enough away from 2001, but it's, it's mixed with a kind of a bittersweet feeling that during that campaign, we, we used them in a very special way. It's WPIX at 40. We took what those buildings symbolized and we made it part of, of who we are. We made it part of our core identity. And I think that makes it so, so very powerful. I don't think you can quite say that about the logo or the identity of any other station, that it's so intrinsically connected uh, to New York and to, uh, to a certain time that's, that's now forever gone.